Vaughn in high school, he was arrogant. Vaughn, Vaughn is special, man. I think um, everything that God makes is a gift. You know what I'm saying? There's only a few chosen. I think he's one of the chosen. He was the life of the party. Um, Vaughn was crazy, fun, um, fun to be around. Liked to play around, class clown. He was popular. When I remember Vaughn was like this superstar basketball track football athlete. He was someone that everyone wanted to be friends with. Very smart, very, uh, very driven. Whether it was in school, grade, sports, music, whatever we was doing, Vaughn was searching for how can we attain that next best thing. You know what I mean? It was never a stop, never an end moment. It was never like, oh, okay, we got this, we good. You know what I mean? It was like, nah, let's, let's get this next one. He was handsome. <laughs> he, um, he was a player. <laughs> Back in the day, man, playboy, I mean, you know, it's the click, you know what I'm saying? It says itself, self-explanatory. Vaughn had the women, man. That's one thing he was, he was known for, man, you know what I'm saying? Vaughn was a cool cat, you know. I remember uh, dude had, you know, a lot of ladies at the high school, you know, back in those days. For the, the women, you know, he can be persuaded, you know, he can, you know, get any woman that he wants. You know, he shined, and even, even if he wanted to go to the Olympics and do that, he could have shined, you know what I'm saying? Anything he wanted to do in sports in general, you know what I'm saying, he was just a natural athlete. He always had speed, he was always quick. Uh, he could sing too, he was in choir, I think uh, at least three or four years. When I was in high school, I think he was a freshman. So I know he was in choir his freshman year, and I think he stuck with it all four years. Very challenging, fascinating, but in a group situation such as a performance class, which is what I taught, choir, you have certain routines and procedures that need to be followed so that the entire group can progress. People like Vaughn are such strong individuals. Sometimes they're on their own page in the book. They're coloring outside the line. So as a teacher, when you have a student like Vaughn, you're both fascinated, but also uh, challenged to find creative ways to keep him doing what he is supposed to do and being where he's supposed to be. They butted heads a lot. You know, she, um, she was a perfectionist herself. She wanted everything to be great. Um, she had a, a name for herself. She was um, a great choir teacher and she expected her choir to be great. The ear training that he got in choir and the uh, rigorous training in sight reading and, and perfecting classical music because we had a very good choir with very high standards. Choir was like a, a preppy getaway. You know, a, a choir teacher she was real serious, she was real strict. My role in high school was to keep him doing what he was supposed to do and teach him as much as I could about choir and through choir dealing with very diverse people within the choir. She really um, expected more than us and I knew that in that choir room there was something going on on that campus that nobody else at the school had any idea about. Vaughn stood out. He got chosen as a special dancer. He's got some moves. Um, yeah, he does. He's got some moves that nobody knows about. Um, he used to be a special dancer. Um, he used to get chosen a lot for solos. Um, he, was, he was a standout in choir. You'd be surprised. Having, you know, choreographers who still work at Theater Under the Stars, Rosie Curtis and things like that, who taught us um, choreography and dance move and taught me how to tap and a lot of people don't know that side of me, you know, and like I said, there was something going on in South Houston in that choir room that nobody else on the campus could understand, you know, but it was that deep a, a family to where um, I found a woman that I'd spend the rest of my life with. It was a family, sometimes a dysfunctional family, but most often a functional family. We really uh, walked into that room and we felt like we were at home. Um, there was a lot of laughs. Um, there was a lot of crying. There was, I mean, everything you would expect from a family. There was uh, brotherhood, there was friendship, there was love, there was spirituality, uh, that there was hard work, there was discipline, and 
I considered myself a part of like a lab for human experience. And these young people that came through the choir had a chance to try their wings. They had a chance to make mistakes, pick themselves up, try again. And they had a really good chance to form relationships with their classmates while they were preparing for performances and while they were performing for audiences. And I think it was a very special bond. And my role in that sense was I instigated all of that and then the students made it happen. And he was a very important part of that.